Ready? Yep. Okay, hello everyone. This is our this is our first live stream Ask Me Anything and this is Farmin, the founder of Zcoin and I am the CEO of uh, Zcoin. So we're having this on Periscope which is also broadcasted on Twitter and if you want to ask questions, you know, you can join in to our Telegram channel or our Discord channel and that's at uh, Elias Zcoin Project. Uh, of course, if you want to post on Periscope, we'll probably look at it as well. So yes, uh, you know, start asking questions. So we'll start working with the questions that have been asked. <laughs> okay, let's see. Right, Wayne, he asks, what do you have for breakfast? I'm not even going to honor the... <laughs> <laughs> what do you have for breakfast? I don't know. I don't have the breakfast. I just have uh, lunch. Wow. Uh, it's a uh, Thai food. Yeah, I had the hotel breakfast, so nothing that interesting. So the, another question they asked, uh, during the finance, ask me anything, Ruben mentioned the integration with PromPay. Could you give us more details about that? More, more so that? basically, um, we try to, to use cryptocurrency to do payment, and PromPay is a Thai QR payment system that having like 45 million users using it at the moment, mm -hmm. and 2 million users like two million like, merchants. Two million merchants yes. uh, are participating in in Thailand, and we think with PromPay it allows Zcoin to have mass adoption. And I talk with uh, regulator, especially Bank of Thailand and uh, SEC. Um, Bank of Thailand is still concerned about crypto payment at the moment. Mm -hmm. So we need to find a way to get around that that uh, kind of concern. And right now, uh, we are working on the way that we we see that uh, it's not going to violate the law and uh, is still be able to do crypto payment with prompting. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. We are already in uh, quite far under development. Yeah. You should have something working. You probably going to see the the live application, I mean the mobile app mm -hmm. in Android. We think that we are going to go out after Sigma launch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right, then let's see what else. Uh, just to give you some also background, Prompe, you know, it's it's a government back, right? And it's supposed to link directly to your ID yeah. and your bank account. So yep. that people can pay each other easily just using a QR code system. And it's supposed to be like agnostic, that means any type of payments you can accept. And, uh, you know, Stan is also running an exchange so that we can also facilitate transfers as well. So the next question is How are things with the new graphic interface? So let me answer that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so right now, um, the, the new graphic interface is coming along well. I know it's been massively delayed, <laughs> uh, partly due to a developer that kept on developing and not delivering. <laughs> but uh, we have a new developer that's working on it. Uh, he is probably able to give us uh, like a test build maybe sometime in the next week or so. Uh, the only sort of issues that is not report reporting the Xenox statistics accurately yet. But uh, hopefully that should be resolved relatively soon. Uh, one of the delays was also because we needed to redo it to fit Sigma and a lot of things that we thought, uh, you know, we kind of redo it a bit for Sigma implementation and that has been mostly done. And hopefully within the next one, we can give you a better So, what is Probability of rebranding Z. I have so many names at the moment and like not decided yet. I won't mind, but I'm not sure what is the priority. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's going to be first priority at the moment. Priority that we are considered in our mind. But once we have mm -hmm. the right name that everyone agree on and it's a reasonable time, reasonable timing, definitely we, we can rebrand. Yeah. I think one of the concerns is that, uh, you know, we, we are focusing so much on Sigma right now and 
uh, we were thinking, you know, if Sigma is coming around the corner, we should not be rushing the, the rebrand process. I mean, it would have been a good opportunity, but we just don't have the, the resources to both rebrand and launch Sigma. Uh, there's actually an ongoing forum discussion uh, in forum.zcon.io. There's been quite a lot of good suggestions. Uh, and it is something that we really seriously are thinking about because uh, you know there's too much confusion between us and Zcash, and, and we want to move away from that. But it's kind of unfortunate because I, I really like all this merchandise already. But um, it's definitely something that that is trying to see. Okay. <laughs> all right. So yeah, that that's something that we are seriously considering and discussing at the moment. We also uh, we wanted to engage a company to help us with this rebranding process. But it's going to take some time. Uh, these things haven't, cannot be rushed because it's a huge, huge decision beyond us changing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, some of the teams that we were thinking of is kind of moving away from the black hacker metrics type of background and moving to a more like friendly, you know, it's, we don't want to paint privacy in a negative light. And we want to kind of like, uh, you know, say that privacy is for everybody, not just for like, you know, dark usage. And I think the colors have to reflect that as much as I like the, the matrix. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see what well, things are. Where are you guys? Malaysia or Thailand? We are currently in Bangkok right now. Where can I buy Starbucks? <laughs> Z-Coin? No, not yet. <laughs> uh, That's from support? Because right now in, in Thailand, um, Starbucks is bought by, um, uh, how do you say, like, the guy, the richest, the guy like Maxim, I mean Maxim Thailand, and um, one of the big buried company in Thailand. They basically bought Starbucks. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, soon we going to see either or uh, maybe we can pay Starbucks with Prompay. That one is further future that could happen. And like with that one, if Starbucks in Thailand accept Pompe, that means basically we can use Stang up to pay to buy a Starbucks. Mm. So yeah, basically I think it's contingent of them accepting Pompe. Yeah, that would allow it if possible. Uh, the other thing is okay, what is the main advantage of Sigma protocol over others in simple words? You want to start um that? you can think like Zcash having trust it up, which is uh, something that we talk about it a lot. And in simple term, it's kind of like you can say like some kind of like com committee that holding the key to create a small new board. And with the monero, you can think like uh, it's not real privacy cryptocurrency because it's just the core system. So we are in the middle that provide real privacy with Sigma. At the same time, we don't have trusted up. So actually, our position is so. It connect. Uh, you can also connect through Twitter and stuff like that. So I think it's a C protocol. Uh, I think what you're saying that you know there's been recent concerns about how private uh, Monero is. You know, when we talk about decoy transactions, it means hiding your transactions in the crowd. Uh, you know. You know, basically, you know, whenever you send a Monero transaction, you you know hide it with like ten or eleven other other decoy transactions. And there's been recent research. You know, just take a look at Flux XMR, and even when uh, Ian Mia is talking about you know uh, flashlight attacks, overseer attacks. Uh, remember that everything on the blockchain is permanent; it's set in stone. So. Although it may not be so easy to do today, with time passing, you know, those sort of things may be an issue. So um, we feel that with Sigma, you know, it's first of all a very simple construction. That means, you know, a lot of people are saying green is very really good because we have so, you know, such a simple construction and that makes it easier to audit. No trusted setup, not using any fancy moon map or cryptography. I think it's a, really, a good step in the right direction. And on top of that, we also have the Lantus, uh, which actually builds off Sigma that gives a lot of additional capabilities on top of uh, Sigma as well. 
So, okay, Leon is saying, does uh, uh, change from Z coin to Sigma or Lalantis affect Exodus layer in any way? Mm, but it's going to change Exodus layer some part because right now we are working on like making Exodus layer to support Sigma as well. And of course, in the future, it's going to support layer plus. So that means everyone that want to create their own token on Zcoin network can utilize Sigma or Helium Plus protocol on their own token, which is, I think is quite cool for, for, for Zcoin. Mm. Yes. So, so Exodus, for those of you who don't know, we actually haven't really talked much about it, but the Exodus layer is what we call a smart asset uh, layer, basically. You know, like how in Ethereum, you can have kind of like ERC20 tokens. Uh, similarly, we would have allow people to build, uh, you know, tokens on top of Zcoin, and that functionality is actually already live, though we haven't really documented it yet. There have been some circles of uh, people wanting to build on it, and we'll review it later, I guess. But the idea is that you know, uh, to be quite useful in the sense that to be different than let's say any other asset tokenization layer, we want to have the Yes, the privacy, the, they wanted to have the privacy of Sigma on the Lantus. So yes, Leon, um, right now tokens don't support Sigma on the Lantus, and it's actually something that we are actively developing on. Uh, you will see that actually there's a PR that increases the op return size of um, the script size, yeah. and that is with a specific intention to support Sigma functionality in the Exodus token layer. Uh, so there was another question uh, from Toby. He says that notice through research on YouTube that there are no sources of information in German from the single mining video. <laughs> okay, Zcoin interest increasing popularity in our German speaking area. Would there be information videos about Zcoin in German after the Sigma mainnet release? Uh, yes, actually, Sebastian Mack is supposed to be working on it, so you can. Poke him. <laughs> uh, he's, he's working on the on the translation video, and um, I think we wrongly assume that most Germans speak English, <laughs> um, and we are thinking of expanding uh, our language support, uh, not not just for uh, you know English, but other actually. Um, we're going to I think will be happening quite soon. Uh, maybe women should be included as well if there's a, there's a big community there. Uh, as for videos, yeah, I know maybe we can get Sebastian to, to speak in German or <laughs> to, to narrate the videos as well. Okay, um, let's see. Can you talk, guys talk a bit more about your thoughts on on-chain governance? Very keen to hear Parman's thoughts on this. Mm. So basically, um, I... Just have talked with uh, Ruben. We running the on chain governance, and like I saw many like cryptocurrency mm. that try to do on chain governance, and in some sense, um, I really think it's a good idea to have on chain governance. But at the same time, uh, we need to take a look at uh, the legal perspective as well. Either uh, it's going to consider it as a security or not, because uh, with uh, on-chain governance, that means uh, SEC can look is as a, some kind of like uh, company or enterprise that uh, want to make a profit from from on-chain governance. So even though we we not reaching that uh, fair yet, but but we need to take precaution about uh, on-chain governance in terms of uh, legal perspective. That is something that like. <coughs> Uh, my my idea. Yeah, of course. I think you know, like it's actually something we just discussed yeah. about. Uh, you know, like when you when you start having um, voting rights and <laughs> things like that. Um, with the the recent legal sort of uh, developments in the space where there people have voting rights and. Dividends, yeah. you know, we can you take if you look at mass notes, they're not technically dividends, but if you look at the way if you give them voting rights and you give them master note rewards, 
in the SEC mind might be deemed to be a security. So we're being really, really careful on that. Uh, and actually, like, we haven't really found an on-chain governance solution that actually makes a lot of sense uh, without compromising privacy. A lot of the really promising governance solutions like quadratic voting and all these type of things require you to reveal your identity, which kind of defeats the point of, uh, <laughs> of a privacy coin. Uh, it's something that we definitely, we are trying to complete like our decision of this by the, by the end of the year and then we'll spend 2020 to develop this. Uh, and it's something that definitely we, we want to look at, especially I think, you know, although the founder reports end uh, sometime next year, we do want to continue developing. And I don't think we're at a, at a place that we can say, yeah, you know, just let it out in the open. Of course, uh, we are open to community feedback. You know, uh, we, we definitely want to hear from you guys what you guys think. Uh, you know, you can talk in the forums or Telegram chat. I would recommend the forums because then it doesn't get lost. Uh, that's something that we are seriously thinking about. Right now, our focus is just to finish Sigma and yeah. getting the adoption. Um, but it is quite high on our priority, the bigger governance. Because you remember, who's paying me is the <laughs> dev wallet. So if we have no dev wallet, dev funding, yeah. nothing, uh, you know, it affects us all directly. Yeah. So it's definitely something that's pretty high on priority. Um, yes. Yes, like... <clears throat> It's also like original. My idea is like four years support to like uh, SW coin uh, to be major coin mm. and like uh, we almost four years now. Yes, yeah, like three years. years. Yeah, and almost three years. Yeah. With current situation, we <coughs> think that uh, we not we maybe not like uh, so why <laughs> not really so I mean like, can so why but. The community involving still quite so. If we pass here, we still need more time. It's something that uh, funding still like with four year from the well maybe uh, uh discuss either uh some sort of like a donation or whatever thing or even foundation. Mm -hmm. That is my. Yeah, I think the point Parmi was saying is that, you know, with the initial plan, which was rather optimistic, was that, you know, within four years, we would have amassed like, sufficient market cap and interest to this kind of self-sustained development, similar to like Monero or like Bitcoin right now. Uh, but you also have to realize that, you know, although we say Bitcoin and Monero is self-funded, that's not quite true. Like, for example... Uh, with Bitcoin, you know, some would say Blockstream is being funded by an uh, entity that has interest. With Monero, I think there are a lot of early adopters that are continuing to fund Monero. Uh, you know, is, is it, do we want, like, the, I think the good thing about having a development reward that comes from the block, you know, there's no worries about outside influence because we are incentivized to make it work. Uh, the problem with having no type of development funding is that whoever then sort of dictates development, you know, like for example with, with Bitcoin and, and whatnot, you know, that that's kind of like a another way of outside influence. So that has to be considered quite seriously. And even if you take a look at Zcash, who I think came up with the founders reward model, they are also looking at how to, to proceed past uh, the four years period. And I think it's really important to see how the, the, the community reacts to that. Uh, Dev Warrior asks, what are your plans on the comic swap? Um, I don't have any problem with atomic swap or yeah. these in the light of things. Uh, personal, personally, I really support it. And I really want to see atomic swap and these in the light exchange get into daily user, like mm. daily life user, or every but now people using it. But we need to accept it first. Right now, the main problem is about liquidity. Like, you can create atomic swap, or you can create distance, decentralized exchange, fast, like, really beautiful interface, mm -hmm. uh, really fast execution. <coughs> but the point is, um, when we come to trading, which I operate right now, I know that liquidity is the most important 
when you want to sell, you need to be able to sell. When you want to buy coin, you need to be able to buy. And those decentralized exchanges that you think are going to work. doesn't answer the, the problem at the moment. That's why we see a lot of decentralized exchanges. It's a good idea. It's a really, really good idea. But uh, it needs to solve the, the security problem first to, to, to get adoption to get used with like normal trader. Yeah, uh, see, I mean, most, <clears throat> I mean, there are quite a few DEXs right now, the adoption level of those, you know, still mainly on centralized exchanges, Binance, Bitfinex, and I think Atomic Swaps is one component only uh, that kind of like, you know, makes DEXs possible. But I think the reason why Dev Warrior asked is because he actually developed a Dragon GUI mm. for, for Atomic Swaps and he successfully completed a Litecoin and Zcoin tested as well. Mm. So we really like that kind of yeah. stuff and we think it's important in the long term. But maybe like, I don't know whether we'll even see taxes in the next one year or so. I think a lot of, a lot of things have to happen before taxes are more mainstream. Yeah. And I, I mean like yeah. the, the best standard the best shot that we can see right now is going to because so in my opinion, I on top three exchanges in the world mm. that have liquidity in center light exchange. Yeah. So once they want to do the center light exchange, that means they can bring liquidity into the that the center light exchange for sure. So with that one is the best case that we can see the possibility of the center light exchange, whether it's going to to the market or to drop, but to not to go to the market. But we're gonna see it, and I really want to see how um, this like exchange from Binance is working. Mm, that worry was also talking with me privately that he was thinking about for the the atomic swaps to be more for OTC purposes, mm -hmm. which I guess is also a good use case for this mm -hmm. type of thing. So that, you know, uh, you don't really need the liquidity; you just want to swap from this yeah. and that without any counterparty risk and I think it would be a good tool to support this type of thing. Uh, so Crypto Penguin says any chance of supporting zero knowledge auditing for third parties, for example, to allow tax department to see that we have three hundred thousand baht per year income to fit in a lower tax bracket without fully revealing how much we own. <laughs> I think I think there is a there is a the technical way to do it for sure, um, especially for tech department. But the point is, right now um, we are living in hybrid world, which is a hybrid world, hybrid, huh? hybrid world, which is like normal like world that we put money into the bank. And another way is like we are using cryptocurrency. So with tax department, they need to look at both um, both traditional world and future world, basically cryptocurrency world, to come up with your income per year. Mm. So in this case, um, I think it's quite hard to apply zero knowledge proof to traditional business, to the traditional banks, because what they're going to do is like they provide all statements to, to tax, government, or like balance. And like- We're not even sure what for this type of technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's something that like it's going to take some time to to change bank system to, to support this kind of technology. But with cryptocurrency, it definitely can do it right right away. Hmm. Okay. So the next question is: Proof of work now demands huge energy consumption. Mining equipment is getting more expensive. How to solve the possibility of proof of work centralization and the waste it produces? Hmm. That, that is something that like people talking about uh, how is using a lot of energy consumption. But I can give you an idea. Uh, right now we have so many companies <laughs> that's for RE100. RE100 is like, uh, they want to using re renewable energy 100%. For example, Google, Facebook, those have like even Microsoft. And actually, with the data center, they cannot using all renewable energy, but they want to come in into IE hundred. So that's why the people that mining the coin, 
the PowerPoint have the possibility to sell certificate that this electricity came from, let's say, um, renewable energy, let's say solar, solar panel or wind power, wind, uh, those kind of stuff that be considered as a clean energy to a big company. So it's some kind of like uh, makes a big company having more seller in, in this market. And like we come back to the, the, the question like how require huge energy consumption with the, uh, uh, with this one. But at the same time I talked earlier, we can definitely sell a certificate on this one for for big company to making more like um, money on, on mining uh, PowerPoint. And at the same time, you need to come back to the root of the problem first, why we need to have power. Uh, because we want to do fairly distribution of the coin to everyone. So that the mechanism that we propose, which is PAP, is a mechanism that can make sure that someone that joined the network later on, let's say four years from now, they still be able to access and get coin from validating or mining the, the PowerPoint. So in this case, it's kind of like, yes, it's consume high energy, but those high energy, you can sell some, you can get some, like, get some certificate and sell to big company in terms of if you are using solar panel and at the same Mostly time, hydro, right? yeah. and uh, at the same time, with how far you still be able to get a uh, ferry distribution from, from, from. I think the idea is that, you know, we feel that, of course, we know that proof of work is not the most efficient consensus mechanism, you know, like obviously proof of stake, delegated proof of stake, and then in and all these things, they achieve much higher performance characteristics. And from a pure, I would say, performance characteristics, those are definitely better. But what proof of work provides is the distribution in the sense that anyone with a computer or with electricity can contribute uh, and, and get a chance to, to get these coins. And that's really powerful. That means even if I'm blocked off from exchanges, even if I'm blocked off from, from all these things, there is a way to get coins. And and that's independent from any sort of institution. Or, because let's say if, if in the proof of stake coin, if I don't have exchanges, if I'm cut off from exchanges, where can I get the coin? I, I can't, right? And uh, we feel that proof of work, it's not the best, mm -hmm. but in terms of distribution, there isn't really a replacement to that. And I feel that there's some value in having consuming a real, like a real something that exists in this world to get a virtual item that yeah. kind of caps the value of, of, of what it is. And you know, when you see mining equipment is getting more expensive, that's actually not true. Like. Like we, 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 we are kind of anti A6, but not yeah. really anti A6, but in the sense that right now, NTP mainly being mined by graphic GPUs and GPU costs are coming down. Yeah. And actually, in, you know, I wouldn't say that it's really a big issue. With A6, you know, whether we're going to embrace A6, that's a really difficult question because on the other hand, you know, some people believe that A6 are in effect, a type of proof of stake because if you only own the ASIC, you cannot mine other coins, so you kind of invest it in the coin yourself. Uh, and and you apparently get higher security because the hash rate is higher. However, that also kind of negates the, the distribution effects of, of proof of work. And we kind of have to balance all of that out. So I mean, like you know, maybe later down the road, like for example, when you know after a certain, a few more halvings, yeah. they may come a stage where, well, you know, if the block reward is so low, it may not be worthwhile to mine. And in those type of circumstances, 
it might make more sense that okay we already have like 16 years of distribution or mining maybe it's time to move to proof of stake and i think that we're not counting it completely yeah. has done proof it perfectly yeah. yeah so we're just kind of waiting to see how the technology develops because as zcoin proof of stake and proof of work and and trying to figure out all the streets researching into this our specialty is privacy and yeah. That's where we are focusing most of our efforts on right now, sir. <laughs> okay, so any other questions? What time is it now? So let's see anything else. Okay. Uh, so I think a few of you are have you know probably will be asking what when is uh, Sigma going to be launched? Mm -hmm. Uh, we we go we should be having our release candidate quite soon maybe in the next week or so we actually originally uh, scheduled for for this uh, Friday but uh, slight slight hiccups but I think uh, I think it's not very it's not not a big setback just a very small one and we just need a bit more time to finalize that and we actually on our GitHub we already actually committed the date yeah. to to go live. So if you really want a, a date on when Sigma, you can take a look at GitHub. Uh, it should be relatively soon. <laughs> I mean, like, mostly PR, you can take a look at the PR in the GitHub at the moment. And, like, uh, it's just, like, uh, we already completed all the coding. Mm -hmm. You just want to make sure that, like, we are not missing anything. And, like, we really, really want to test out uh, including like C node, sigma, yes. transition of sigma, like can be convert min zero point, min c point, like min zero point to min sigma, mm -hmm. and can we do spend? After that, it's some kind of like we just want to make sure that after we release into RC, release candidate, mm -hmm. uh, a month from now, let's say we don't have any problem or potential for going to happen in our network. That's we want to make sure those kind of situations won't happen. Yeah. And I know some of you have been saying, well, you know, Nix took our code and deployed it first. I don't think, you know, we should be too worried about that. And the, well, we were the ones that, that kind of started this. Yeah. And I think it's more important to get it right rather than just, just be the first. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Last time I checked some Zplay Mobile Wallets, Konami Trust, Kobo H. All did not have min spend feature. That's a very good question. Yeah. Is there any plan by these wallet providers to add them for Sigma Levantus? And only for now, okay, uh, maybe I'll start with that. Maybe. So actually, we are already in talks to, to, to do some, uh, to have mobile wallet support for our min and spend. Um, now, when I spoke to Edge and Trust, uh, they were definitely open to having the privacy features on board. One of the challenges is because uh, the Sigma library is in C++ and generally mobile uh, wallet implementations require it to be in JavaScript or TypeScript. Yeah. And there needs to be a conversion uh, from C++ to TypeScript or some sort of C++ bindings mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to the library as well. So uh, once Sigma is complete, we will actually be starting work to uh, separate the library out from, the, from our own uh, Qt implementation that will allow people to just look at the library, doesn't have to look at the rest of the Zcoin code. And then uh, we, are, we are still debating whether to do bindings or a port to TypeScript at the moment. And uh, once that happens, then uh, mobile wallet implementations will be a lot easier. Uh, I think that that is the main yeah. concern. Also, also, uh, either we go to implement on our own, like an official mobile wallet, or we are going to hire some third party to implement for us. That that is still in discussion. On this one. Yeah, well, we we are. In we're in the midst of getting quotations and, and discussions with some companies to see uh, what they can do with us. We're still weighing whether is it, should we do it in-house or, yeah. or uh, you know, to outsource it. Uh, but I think maybe the first step is to get that Sigma library separated out. Yeah. 
uh, and yeah, and the other things. Okay, would love to see native treasure support and integration with Exodus Wallet. So treasure support, it actually, yeah, I mean native treasure support. I'm not sure how to go about that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's just a, a pure function of market cap, yeah, uh, rather than anything else. Uh, they are like for example, if you go through the web wallet integration, we actually would be able to support like Trezor or yeah. mobile wallet. So that's a uh, uh, a possible outlet on that. Integration with Exodus Wallet, uh, we are on their radar at the moment. Uh, I think maybe we need to improve our market cap a bit. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely we're on their radar and we're definitely, they're definitely talking to us right now. Uh, another question is has from Haha001. <laughs> has the development team considered changing the economic model for several Years ten to twenty, similar to mandatory inflation. Tricky question. Yeah, any, <laughs> any tricky question. Um, like with the with our economic uh, economic model at the moment, I I think um we we may be not changing it yet, but if we see some problem let's say with uh, i can give you an example about um, c note mm. uh that we found out that so many people park c coin in c note and our what, binance exchange which is the largest exchange for c coin having a few c coin buy and sell there so with this one we also considering to change the economic model for sure um but at the same time, is not going to be like uh, come up with the model soon. Definitely, we need to talk with uh, economics like guy to come up with some kind of model that can come up with like a research paper for you guys to read whether you guys uh, fully agree with it or not before changing anything. That definitely is something that we are looking for. Yeah, I mean, you have to realize that, you know, one of the things about cryptocurrency is that you should not be playing too much with the economics unless we have very clear consensus to move forward. Because, you know, like just imagine if Bitcoin said, I'm going to have a tail emission right now, you know, and I, I don't know how, I think it kind of dilutes the value of Bitcoin a lot because it's seen as like, you know, so, code that, that should not be yeah. changing. These are the basic rules that we can yeah. The good thing about Zcoin, I think it was still relatively small that we can still kind of make this type of decisions, but it shouldn't be like such a total overhaul of the system until that, you know, we're screwing over the people that, that invested based on the belief that these are yeah. what the, the, you know, the rules are. Uh, you know, we are still evaluating, especially master notes, how, how they interact whether they are actually good for the economy or not, and whether uh, you know this is something which should they be increased, should they have a separate fee structure, uh, how to segregate them, you know, what's too expensive for them to come in, or or is it too cheap? You know, these are things that we, we are definitely talking about. We actually had a talk about it this morning, but I would say that it would be very 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 before we change any game because I think that affects the trust. Yeah. Uh, of, of our project and it kind of makes it centralized if we can dictate change the economic model or not. Uh, so it's not totally out of the question, but I think we would be very careful to do this unless there's a real like pressing need to, mm. to, to change it or there's something that's like an economic backing that like economic paper backing that shows yeah this model is better. And even if you have all of this, I think it's more important that you still need the community support behind it, people who are holding uh, Zcoin uh, to, to, to weigh in on this issue because I don't think uh, some economic models should be just changing, uh, especially as we get more mature. Uh, hey, Bobby! <laughs> Bobby from uh, CoinGecko just joined us. Uh, but yeah, actually, like personally, I know this is going to be quite controversial, but I personally like tail emission. But everyone likes to say, oh, with tail emission, infinite supply. <laughs> but 
Uh, yeah, I could, since when we've been drinking Diet Coke, I drank a lot of Diet Coke. <laughs> it's not, not, not a good thing, and I'm getting kind of fat, but... Uh, <laughs> but yes, I mean, I hope that answers your question on the economy model. Is there anything in particular uh, that you, you know, have any concerns of where do you think, you know, our economic model is, is yeah. not sufficient? Yeah. So... Yeah, because we, we we ourselves are really thinking hard on this and actually like this morning probably said we we are not economists, we shouldn't be making yeah. these decisions alone. Uh, and we should really look at how the game theory works. Yeah. Uh, there's something that, that, that we are thinking about but yeah. not uh, we really have to research into this. So definitely we, we need to educate some some like someone like that know about um, economics and also interested in uh, cryptocurrency. Mm. Uh, it's either going to be like people who are crypto economic, crypto economic still kind of person that uh, we definitely going to engage them and come up with their, their possibility that if we do uh, this thing, what is going to happen, the pro and con in each solution that, that we are going so that's why we need to make sure that everything is already weighted and before we making a decision. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, JP Connie, Swiss Crypto Cat say hi. Uh, a lot. Okay, just one thing that I actually wanted to sort of uh, highlight on is uh, you know a lot of people are really interested in Atlantis, and I think rightfully so. Uh, you know, we've been actually invited to to present at the Monero conference on this. Yeah. Uh, to to uh, show Melantis and its capabilities, and um, we actually recently updated our Melantis paper on ePrint. Uh, we've actually much improved performance. I think we managed to half the verification time, which is a really good step in the right direction. And uh, we actually also are looking at um, uh, Doing what? How do you pronounce it? Hierarchia, 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 hierarchy, hierarchy, hierarchy. hierarchy, hierarchy uh, so multiple uh, one out of n proofs, which basically will allow uh, further Lambda scaling, and and we have some preliminary re results that we can reduce proving time by uh, maybe five times or so. It dealt very well with the zero coin fall issue. <laughs> wish, wish it didn't have to deal with it, but uh, thanks, thanks for the yeah. of support. Thing is something that is, uh, it's, and and you know I think I'm glad that we caught it early. <laughs> uh, it could be, it could be. Yeah, the song is really yeah. nice, but really, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know, it's a bit hackery. And, uh, Problem with stigma is something that like, if we want to go with this route. We need to come out with like talking with, let's say, uh, with exchanges, current exchange that listing us. Either they was their problem, or they can change right away. The mm -hmm. kind of stuff and like um, the address. Let's say right now we begin with a or this or this that. Are we going to change uh, to let's say X? Or S or not? It's something that like once we okay, start the batch thirty two. <laughs> yeah, it's something that like we need we need to talk about a lot, and like with the with the logo itself, and along with the those kind of Sequoia Foundation, are we going to change the name of the company as well in this case? But I would be that right now we still consider as small coin. Mm. So if you want to change, I suggest to change it now, run your land, but we become bigger and cannot change it. Yeah. Uh, there's actually another coin called Sigma coin, but yeah. I think they're rank 1000 something. Or, 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 or. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we'll take maybe one, one or two more questions, if then we'll probably wrap up. Yeah. Let's see. Let's is there any questions that I missed up? Yeah. 
Okay, I think that covers it, right? Mm-hmm. We have done with the Mantis, Sigma. Yeah. What programming language will, will, will be ne- needed to work with the C++ smart assets? Zenidity. Uh, no, no, not really. Um, it's going to be like normal scripting language. Script. No, it, it's actually not even script, but you can think like um, with this one, with our smart asset that we are talking about, is something that we already have the format for you. So right now, um, you actually can call it on, um, on C, C Coy call one. Oh, and you can call the, the command line to create the, the, the token on our platform. So it's going to create a raw transaction and just submit that raw transaction into the network. You don't need to know uh, JavaScript. You don't need to know anything because this one is not like fully smart contact. It's, it's like uh, the the standard that allow you to create a format that we already give the, 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 the format or put the standard for you guys. So no need to hold anything. Yeah, so I think basically what, what they're saying is that like, it's almost like, uh, just like, okay, how many coins, how many coins do you want to, to exist in yeah. your in your new coin? Do you, yeah. you want 21 million, do you want 1 million or yeah. so? So it's just a matter of filling in certain parameters. Yeah. And I think we're working on the GUI to make that a bit simpler. Yeah. I think the idea is that we, we are not going to be a smart contract platform. I mean, I mean yeah. not, not the way that we're heading. Mm-hmm. It's because, um, first of all, you know, our long block times, five minutes, is not really suitable for that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we want to say, oh, yeah, we're going to deliver things like crypto kitties. Uh, those are being served by people that are using deep ports and whatnot, it's more sense to use those type of coins for those uh, things. So I wouldn't say full smart contract capability, but uh, more like smart asset thing, I think similar to, 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 to Raven and stuff like that. But I think the idea is what we're trying to say is that, look, you know, we don't want to, to abandon our roots of being a, a privacy coin, you know? And we just said, yeah, if you want to have an asset with privacy features, come to Zcoin. And I think that's a, a good way. The, the, the main idea is like, if you want to have token or asset that simple and you don't need to port anything, come to Zcoin. And with this token, is also enable Sigma protocol mm. for your token as well. So basically, it's some kind of like, if you want to have your want to have your own stable coin, you can come and create on C coin network by utilizing Sigma or Linux Plus in the future. And it's basically like you can have like a tether with privacy features, which I think is quite quite a powerful thing. Uh, so, what programming lang- computer language do you recommend learning to directly contribute to? C coin backend development. C plus. Yeah, it's just C plus plus. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Uh, and I guess learn maybe read that uh, Andreas, what was it? Understanding. Mastering of Bitcoin. Uh, mastering Bitcoin. Can an Exodus token be traded with Z coin? Of course it can. Like yeah. it's can I right now actually uh is having deck inside as well. Yeah, there's an inbuilt deck. Yeah, yeah. Inbuilt deck. Uh, that can do that. Yeah. Not sure whether we want to like totally maintain them. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. It's yeah. <laughs> Everyone can take a look at there's a deck inside and no one really uses it. So that's why we, we we like yeah we don't want to bring it up at the moment. But but definitely it can trade XRC. Yeah, I mean the, just think of an Exodus token similar to an ERC20 token or something that's issued, that, like it's almost exactly like an only data, yeah. which is like USDT, yeah. uh, which is the most yeah. used one at the moment. Yeah. Who makes the market? No. Yeah. It's like we have the functionality, but no one uses it. <laughs> you, you can think like Okay, I think that more or less wraps it off. Uh, we thank you very much for, for participating in this and 
I hope this shows, uh, you know, answers any sort of nagging queries that everyone has. We'll, we have this from time to time, you know, maybe whenever like Carmen and I are in Bangkok together, we can have this. And we really appreciate the time uh, that you guys spend with us. So thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Yeah, just, oh, oh.